Hello, hello, guys. This is Ragu42, together with the Psycraft crew. Hey, guys. Hi. Ooh. Hello. Yeah, we are in a little shack here uh, that Mango proudly built and just showed us. And as we just noticed, it's fully furnished. Chirp. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't come up with that pun. Um, that was someone else. So... I guess we should head outside, right? Because that yeah. could be a bit more interesting. And we can see something we want to show today. Now, as you might imagine, it's in a cold biome, so it's about ice. And I think we should head straight down. Yeah, so this is obviously an ice farm. But there are hardly any pistons, and it's fully AF cable anyways. So, yeah, maybe we just show it right away. Um, I need to take off the shoes. And yeah, the basic idea is that you get into the water stream. You get a pickaxe with silk touch. Now this will take a second. And I'm just holding down left click, by the way. Yeah, it but... takes a second just to deal with flex spikes. Yep. And we're breaking ice at a pretty decent speed. Um, so... Yeah. so, we get about 12,000 ice blocks power. Which is pretty good, I think. Especially since we hardly need any pistons, so it's also very lag friendly. But as you've seen already, it's quite big, and there is a good reason for it. So, obviously, we go along this lane here, which should come to an end soon. And then we get basically flushed into the next lane where the same thing happens. Oh, talking about the end. It's not even the end. It's um, just the last one. Okay. So, basically, this is a complete round trip that you would take. And, yeah, it's just so huge, so everything freezes again, or almost everything, 90%. until you come back. Yep. Oh, and here... Yeah, something didn't sometimes update properly. if the ice freezes very quickly, then the water yeah. hasn't regenerated. That happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe... I'll just stop here and get my shoes back on. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why you have to take your shoes off. So the water streams are interrupted with the pressure plates. And as you can see, I'm not moving anymore since I have the depth strider boots on. Um, but yeah, without depth strider, you just slide over the ice. Um, then then there's the yeah, here you would um, get pushed again. I'll just show doors. it. There's those trapdoors that align you. Yep. That's useful, so you, you would stand um, not so close to the ice uh, items, so you don't pick up any ice items if you're aligned like this. So if you would be pressed against the wall, then you there's a chance that you would pick up ice items. So they are just the minor difference between being flushed completely against the wall and staying back a little yep, bit. that's enough. And it's also just close enough so you can reach the last ice block in each row. Yeah, exactly. So if so you that's move quite back important 1. thing. 1.5 centimeters, you couldn't reach the fourth ice block, but yeah, like this works. Yeah, so that's a pretty nice design, I think. Um, there are some minor issues with flag spikes, so um, I had so far that every so often, like every three or four hours, one of those pistons wouldn't push me, I guess, and have to make some minor uh, adjustments to those, so, I don't know, push twice or add a clock with a pressure plate or something like that. Yeah, shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. To figure out. Um, let me just. Uh, I don't want to trigger it. Okay, just putting everything back. And in principle, you would come back on this side. So it's a pretty huge farm, as said already. But yeah, it's working fairly well, producing a lot of ice. And of course, the ice is picked up by minecarts, which are going on these tracks here. But 
yeah, it's fairly simple. And of course, you get some silk touch uh, pick access every now and then. Like, not just at the beginning, but I think every second trip or something. Like, um, every time you go back and forth, I think. There are five stations that refill you with pickaxes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one cycle takes about 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. So we're definitely not going to show a full cycle here. Um, maybe we can have another look from on top. Oop, just made it out. So... Also worth mentioning yeah. that we get efficiency three, unbreaking three, silk touch one pick access um, from our perfect toolsmith. We had to check about seven thousand villagers to, to get that perfect toolsmith. So yeah, it was worth it to use the ice farm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's also a pretty nice thing because you can use them directly and have insta break on ice. Yeah, we don't have to do any chanting. You can. Them directly, it's nice. You don't even need, need haste, so we just have jump boost and regeneration here. Yeah, regen because you would run out of um, uh, saturation and, and food bar, <laughs> then yeah, you would take damage in hard mode mm -hmm. and die eventually if you don't have regen. Yep, so which is a bit of regen. Then obviously, the ice comes in here, it's not even too far filled up because we used quite a lot of it, I think. Yeah, melon farm. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of you might know that. Um, we're not going to show it yet. But since we started streaming a bit, um, we've been working on a fairly large project. Um, yeah, we'll show some time later. Then, apart from the ice here, um, we have another few things just matching the cold theme. And actually, it's just one more thing. That is for snow, usual snow farm. Um, yeah, simply a lot of shovels that you can prepare, and I think that lasts for quite some time. Uh, about but, 90 minutes. Well, the shovels here should last a bit longer, shouldn't they? Yeah, a little bit longer, yeah. But yeah. the storage here, which is quite big, this 200 double chest also only lasts for 90 minutes. So. Yeah, so the entire wall that you can see here is just for snowballs. Oh, actually, some of them in. Which you can craft either using the crafting tables or just your inventory into snow blocks, and they end up over here. And of course, I pick an empty chest at first. But yeah, quite a few snow blocks. But I think it's mostly about crafting them. Yeah. That's the main work. Getting snowballs is. Isn't... That much of a problem, really, but the crafting is really annoying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much everything about this farm. So I think we should text, uh, next, well, no, we should head to our next stop. Right? Yeah, sounds good. And we're at the end. So. Still a few meters to go. And I think just as with the ice farm, this is something Mango already showed on his channel. No. Uh, you didn't show that part yet? No. Okay. Well, then maybe we stop at the first part here right away. Um, no. Let's go to. Should the... we first go to the other one? Oh, well. Then another piston bolt. Yeah. So obviously yeah, we got the uh, obsidian. Twenty-eight meters per second, and um, even with friends translocators, we wouldn't be faster. So at least something yeah. we don't have to replace or improve. Oh yeah, especially since they will still work in one point nine with minor adjustments mm -hmm. at the beginning. No, no, those diagonal ones. Oh, they are the same. Oh, okay, even better. But yeah, this is the first part of what we want to show in the end today. So, I guess the easiest way to show it is just to have a look out here. If everything was loading in, which Takes might a take a second. Yep. Okay, so in the center we have a pumpkin farm. As you can see, it's the same design as we used at the barn, I think. Or almost the same. Yep. 
just a budded it's also broken design. online. Yeah, so we'll have to rip that one out, which is kind of unfortunate. But the other parts we can somewhat easily fix. And as you can see, there are some villagers which are uh, busy farming. Is it potatoes in this case? Yeah, looks like potatoes. Mm -hmm. So on this side, they farm potatoes. On the other side, it's carrots. And it still didn't load in completely. Let me try to fix that. Uh, doesn't really like it. OK, maybe we should just clamp up. So just to give you a point of reference here, we're at Y24. So it goes even a bit lower. And if we climb up here, which will take a moment. <laughs> yeah, it does really take a moment, but there's no need to climb up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can see we're still going. And still going. The pumpkin farm stops at some point. And the other power is also loading in. So, still not at the top. That's off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spoil it. Yeah. Um, I guess you can see it uh, on every screen. Now 160, 170. And we still need to climb a few more blocks. Mm -hmm. Well, can't be too far anymore. I guess you can see the top of the pumpkin farm now. Well, part of it, we'll load it in. And we have arrived. Finally. So, yeah, now we are completely on top of the farm. And if you take a look at the Y coordinate, we are pretty much at build limit, so we couldn't squeeze in another layer up here. Of these farms and of course the carrot tower has the same size so how many layers do we actually have in here on each uh, tower? i think 48 and 25 over there uh you mean 25 for the pumpkin farm no the other potato and carrot farms uh oh we still have some behind yeah, yeah if you stand right. here you can see them so there are even some additional ones behind. That's not smart. Shooting arrows. <laughs> you could hit one villager. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> one at the top here, like this guy. Hey. Yes, yeah, so that's quite a lot. Um, but it there's does, a uh... good reason why we need them. And for that, I think we should head back down, shouldn't we? Um, is this also the downwards thing? Like, can we fall down here? You would it land in the water? I don't know what's down there, but I could try if you want to. Um, I'll try. Mm -hmm. There are a few parts, but I doubt you will hit something reasonable. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this is sort of dangerous to walk out here, but... I'm not sure what's uh, going to I have to be so now. careful at the moment. I have 1,001 levels. <laughs> it's a shame. <laughs> I have to oh. That calls for trying to kill Mango, but ah well. Well, I made it out yeah. just fine when falling down. Okay. So you're already back down? Yeah, I'm now in the water collection. Oh, area. in the water down there. Yeah, I'm already at the sort of AFK spot. Okay. Uh, Mango's also here. And yeah, essentially, these two guys are the reason why we need such a large amount of potatoes and carrots and pumpkins as well. Now, as you can see, we have the three chests here um, yeah, with the three different things. And of course, there's a bunch of things. Yeah, three chests per type. So we have quite a lot of um, stuff coming in here. There are just a bunch of hoppers up there behind the lava. Um, which pick up the items. Maybe, yeah, maybe actually, it's actually a, show a kind of sophisticated system with hopper minecarts even. <laughs> yeah, to distribute everything. Oh, from here mm -hmm. we can actually see it. So as you can see, stuff is really piled up into huge stacks. And Nassim is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sort of in a risky that. mood. <laughs> yeah, so everything gets on top here with item elevators and gets distributed into the chests. But yeah, single hoppers clearly wouldn't be sufficient. So how many um, carrots and potatoes do we actually have to stuff into the chests here? 
Mm, that's just a small buffer storage, about 40,000. Okay. I mean, uh, how many do we have the stuff in here power? Oh, yeah. Um, so we have 75 of those um, urinary bit farms. And did some testing where if one yields about 1,075 items, so about 80,000 potatoes and carrots. Okay, and some and pumpkins. Pumpkins are uh, with about 40,000 power. Okay. Now, that sounds like quite a lot that you couldn't get rid of, but yeah, as I already said, it's about trading. And if Nesson doesn't break everything, not everything. Then Mango can quickly demonstrate what's happening there. So obviously you don't want to click everything yourself, but make sure you use a macro for it. And yeah, that way you can do some sort of automated trading. And yeah, he's just looking around. But at some point, he'll put stuff in the chest here, which then gets shot out and stored over here. And what was the XP you got from this mango? Um, to about 16,000 trades the times 4.5, what's that? 75,000, something like that. 75,000 XP per hour, that's not too bad. Yeah, twice I think the fastest is any Enderman farm or gold farm. Yeah, and even faster than a Guardian farm? I don't remember. No, 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 the Guardian farm is 175,000. That's still the <laughs> <Okay>. fastest <laughs> far XP farm. Even a bit more crazy. Um, yeah, but in the end, we get a ton of emeralds here, and we craft them into emerald blocks. Again, with a water collection system to make it a bit easier. And how far is it actually filled up? Way too far, I think. And so, how many are these? Four times five, over 20 double chests of emerald blocks. And I mean, we also used a few to build these towers, but that's really a minuscule amount. So, we got a ton of emeralds here. Way more than we could ever need, I guess. And yeah, we already wanted to show you something beforehand. Can I stop my screen? finishes. Sorry? Can I stop now? Ah, uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, we don't need to show it for an eternity. Um, yeah, we also have some items that you sometimes have to trade to unlock the villagers. They get sorted out and start uh, sort over here. So sometimes it's even the cake that you need. And someone's being noisy. <laughs> that was Mango dropping items. Oh, yeah. Dropping stuff somewhere. And that stuff will just despawn. Yeah, uh, I should also mention that my, script is, is... that my script is still faster than the farms. So I have to slow it down. Yeah. Even. <laughs> so the farms are still not really sufficient, but... Yeah, expanding them now doesn't really make too much sense. So, should we head to the next uh, we have one last thing to show here. Okay. Which is the uh, poisonous potato farm storage. Oh, you mean how many we get so up there? So, un under the lowest potato farms, I have a hopper minecart running, which collects some poisonous potatoes. Oh, so we have 17 potatoes. Yeah, okay. I haven't done too much AFKing, we get about 10 to 15 per hour. <laughs> so it's just the lowest layer on each farm? Yeah, yeah. so basically, uh, and not even the complete one, just straight parts, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's an, 10 an hour is actually quite a lot then, I would think. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's not Since so bad. Since completely useless, but <laughs> yeah, why, yeah. why not? I mean, okay. Yeah. You basically want one double chest for every item, right? So yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that will take some time. Yeah. Anyway, should we head to the other mm -hmm. train station? Sounds good. So yeah, the piston bolt takes a second. And we've almost arrived, and now we can actually open the vault.
once everyone's around. Uh, I still think this is sort of creepy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Walking above the void on almost clear glass. Uh, yeah, but it looks pretty nice. So, what do we have here? As you can see, again, a lot of chests for things you might not need in large quantities. Well, Eye of the Ender are nice for Ender chests, as long as we can still trade for them. It's not changed to Ender Pearls. Then... Some bottles of XP, which are quite nice for 1.9, obviously. Because it's basically a mobile repair kit. Oh, sorry. A lot of glowstone. I think that's almost filled up. Ah, not entirely. And a lot of lapis. And some other stuff. So, what we're doing here is again also trading, but this time with a lot of priests or clerics, as they're called now. So we use the emeralds we get at the other trading station to get all sorts of trades from the priests. Um, yeah, maybe Mango, you can show it again. I have to prepare. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so maybe in the meantime, I should... Okay, ah, it's okay. running. You're already starting. So here I can do about 32,000 trades per hour. I want to get some XP. <laughs> Just the XP that flies out to the side. Gives you a lot of levels already. How many trades did you do in the other one? 16,000. Okay, so this is twice as fast. Yeah, because you can trade faster. And how many emeralds do you burn per hour? Um, also, the, almost the same amount. Okay, so... 32,000 emeralds. Yeah. I usually trade stops. one emerald for three uh, redstone, something like that. It's one trade. Yeah, so redstone is the primary objective here. Yeah, um, I was kind of disappointed with the speed of the witch farm, the quad witch farm, because we afk there for hundreds of hours and, and always ran out of redstone. And yeah, then I saw that those clerics trade the redstone dust and I thought you could use that to get our redstone faster. And now it's about seven times faster, even with trading for the emeralds to get redstone dust here. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So there's a lot of redstone dust in the chest here with some indicators which ones are filled up. Um, again, crafting system, of course, and redstone blocks are then stored. Uh, maybe just go through three chests, but at the moment we don't have too many redstone blocks here, I think. No. Because we tend to use a lot of them. Um, yeah, but there's also a bunch of villagers sitting around here, and they are actually not for trading. Well, they originally were in the trading booth, the Mango's trading now, but let's just show one of them. Yep, completely locked. So all of these villagers are completely locked up. There's no way you can trade with them again. Um, yeah, which is sort of sad that this happened so easily. But the reason is simply that clerics have so few trades. If they had a few more, then chances would be a lot lower. But they have like four, seven trades only. And yeah. So one thing we should maybe also mention is that, of course, we also have rotten flesh and everything here, like some gold. And that's all just, um, yeah, to reset the trades, obviously. So, did I forget anything? No, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, maybe one last note, if somebody would be interested in this um, AFK um, yeah, trading script um, yeah, it's really optimized for my system so it wouldn't help you at all because it's optimized for my um, resolution of the desktop and um, basically I also had to change some window settings to reach that speed so uh, it wouldn't help you much if you just would use the same one okay yeah. so here in the back it's just storage for some more resetting items 
nothing really special. Okay, so that's this part, and that's actually the last part we wanted to show today, but we're not entirely done. So, as some of you might know, we started around one year ago with this server, and yeah, in other words, this means first anniversary, yay! Yay! Well, yeah, this is sort of a special thing, of course, um, and I think it's the 10th episode. So even that is a round number, and my channel is about to reach 600 subscribers uh, at the time of recording. So a lot of reasons uh, to celebrate. But well, we always show something sort of special or make some large projects, so it's hard to pull something off that's even more impressive, right? Um, so we thought of something else. Um, so while we were streaming, we made some brainstorming, and the idea was that we'd put a copy of this world on a separate server, which will then be public for everyone to visit. And yeah, the server should be up in a few days. Uh, actually, I will probably prepare it um, while the video is rendering, so it might already be up uh, once you see this video. And of course, the address will be in the video description. And yeah, we hope to see you there. We'll also come by from time to time, I guess. And yeah, it will be the world in its current state. So even some things we haven't shown yet are there to discover. And yeah, we hope you enjoy it. So we might have to prepare a few things, like some instructions, um, so things don't break. But yeah, the idea is that we'll put everyone in survival mode so you can really explore the world as we would see it. And you can even try out the farms. But of course, we'll have to write some manuals for that which might take some time. So, yeah, anyways, we'll prepare the world and put it on a server. So, yeah, hope you enjoy it. See you there, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.